for the way we're organized. There's three big problems. And we believe that those three problems are creating a lot of the other problems that we're all trying to solve individually. Whereas if we solve these three problems, then perhaps the other problems will solve themselves. So let me, let me talk about those a little bit. The first problem is competition. We are competing with each other for scarce resources, scarce jobs, scarce money, scarce land, scarce air, scarce water. And we're competing with each other. We're, we're beating each other up really, really bad. Now, competition has its place, but only when everybody has the same amount of information, which leads us to the next problem. There's a tremendous moral hazard in asymmetric information. That's where one group of people has more information than another group of people. And the moral hazard is to take advantage of a person who has less information. And, and this is uh, uh, happening all over the world. There's this huge disparity of information. Now, where asymmetric information and where competition meet is called hierarchy. Okay. Hierarchy is the way we rate each other. We talk about each other in terms of winner, loser, right, wrong, um, poor, rich, demonic, angelic, scale of one to 10, scale of one to five. These are, we, we rank each other, and we rate each other, and this is, this is actually quite um, perverse. Why should this have to be? Um, it was very hard for me to even find a system to classify people which was not a ranking system. That's how deeply embedded this is in our culture. Well, we're gonna show you a way to one, eliminate competition from the economy, two, eliminate asymmetric information, third, eliminate hierarchy, okay? And, and then still preserve the basic elements of an economy. The, um, let me unpack this just a little bit more. This is something called Ontology is Overrated. It's by Clay Shirky. And it's just a very typical picture of a hierarchy. This is something familiar to any corporation, to any flow chart, to any churches and schools. It's something we're very, very accustomed to. Um, but then came the internet. And you have situations where one point on the hierarchy can talk to another point of the hierarchy without necessarily following those branches. Okay, and then we get a little more internet and a little more of these dots start talking to each other outside of the hierarchy. Eventually, we can just take the hierarchy out and the thing stands. It continues. Okay, so this tells us that there does not necessarily need to be these elements in place, the asymmetric information, the competition, and the hierarchy in order for people to function in society. Um, here's a picture of birds flying in tight formation. Well, this is what dinosaurs evolved to. Okay, they used to, instead of growing more armor, instead of growing more weapons, instead of being the color of, of rocks and hiding behind bigger rocks, they grew wings. And this is how they've evolved to survive through absolutely tremendous calamity throughout their existence. So the opportunity is for perhaps us to evolve into a new way of organizing ourselves as a society. So this is what we came up with. It's called Curiosume. Curiosume is um, it's called because the resume must die. Um, that's it's funny. I mean, everybody's laughing, and, and that's that's important because the resume is, is evil. It's I could talk for an hour on the resume alone. How how this device that we've we've grown to love and cherish is just screwing us. The resume is like this two-dimensional unit, which is supposed to somehow articulate social capital, creative capital, and inte intellectual capital. It's absolutely impossible for that to happen. The resume is um, its just keywords, okay? So when you send in your resume, an engineer from Starbucks, an engineer from Boeing, they could never work for the other company because they're described by different keywords, even though they themselves are the same engineer, they went to the same school, the same classes, they, they respond to the same laws of physics, but it's very convenient to sequester people this way because it's a way of controlling people. So there's, there's something there that we, we need to work with is the way we articulate our knowledge assets in the community. So here's the meat of the entire conversation. This is how Curiosity works. Okay, the first thing you do is um, you tag yourself with Wikipedia articles because Wikipedia will become the common public ontology. Instead of having corporations have their individual closets of words that describe their people, then we have this public ontology in the commons of Wikipedia. 
It was created by the community, therefore to join the community, you tag yourself with Wikipedia articles. And the next thing you do is you rate yourself on a scale of student to teacher. And this is really stating your intentions and how you intend to interact with the economy as a student or as a teacher. Um, if you're somewhere in the middle, two people in the middle, they're collaborators because they're, they're iterating between themselves and they're sharing. So what have we accomplished with this? It's really important. We have supply, we have demand. Students and teachers do not compete with each other. Okay, so we don't have any competition. We've got a, a ranking system, which is supply and demand. And then when people start working together, that's called collaboration, you have factors of production. Okay, so if you're looking at a classical economic model, you have those components intact. Supply, demand, factors of production. Now what happens next is interesting because as people start form, um, join, uh, rating themselves in these little boxes, you're going to eventually get a bell curve. And this is how we will observe ourselves in the community. So now we've got, we've eliminated asymmetric information. Okay, so we can observe ourselves mathematically. Um, this is, so, this is so simple to do, and I'll show you the implications of it later, but I need to repeat it again really quick. The first thing you do is you tag yourself with wiki links. Every time you get on the internet, you're tagging yourself with, with spam bait anyway. So this is not a big deal. This is not something that you were not accustomed to. When you, um, you assign yourself a student teacher scale, you're looking for a way to inter in interact with your community. Um, and the third part, the digital personal API is generated. What happens next is a line of code. And that is what's going to replace the resume. That simple line of code in that format. So this is what a curiosume would look like. It could represent an individual. It could represent a persona. It could represent two individuals. It could represent a group, a community, a team. It could represent a product, a service. Uh, it could represent um, a scenario that you want to test. If you read it alone, it, 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 it tells a story, but it's not specific. Okay, so it's perfectly encrypted information. It doesn't make sense until you put your own curiosity back on it. Okay, so this, if you're familiar with, with uh, cryptography, this would be called a public key. And your curiosity, when you lay it back on it, would be a private key. So when you combine the two, then you can, you can reveal the secrets that lie within. But all those sigmas, that's probabilistic data. That allows you to predict the likelihood that a certain event can occur. So I hope the, that technical stuff is, is out of the way, and let's get to the application. You really don't have to see all that, because um, you'll be able to analyze its data visually. So you could add objects to the data, such as location objects or anything you want, and you drop it back onto a map, or you could drop it back onto Wikipedia itself. So for example, one of the first applications would be to drop your curiosity back onto Wikipedia to see where you are. So if you're a, an engineer and a musician, you could see all the different um, links or different tags between the two, which will give you a path of, of for your own economic viability, where to, how, how you're going to behave in a community. It allows you to compare yourself with the, with the data of a community. If you look at this from Christopher Harrison, you can see how rich the Wikipedia visualizations are. And for the, for the topic of humans, you can see all those linkages. If you zoom in, you can see how everything, all the, all the different classifications are there and their linkages to other classifications. So the next thing, here's an example of a Wikipedia editorial war. This is where uh, a world event may have happened, and then it changes. And somebody changes the Wikipedia article. And then another editor gets in and has to change their article. And then somebody else changes their article. And this is the, the flow of what happens during a Wikipedia editorial war. And you could see where one event way up in this corner could impact something many, many degrees of freedom later. Now imagine if some decision made in Congress up here you could actually see how it would affect people many, many different um, linkages away. You could see all this in the data. What's interesting is here is a Wikipedia war over Arab Spring. And you could see the form of these two visually is extremely similar. Okay, so this gives you an idea, the ability to look at similar events. 
just by looking at the data. You're not doing a calculus, you're not crunching the numbers, but you're just looking at the data and you're able to see where you are in, 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 the, in that economy. Um, so is this new? No, it's not. It's really called big data. And this is what big data does to you all day long. While you're home modifying and correcting your resume, big data is taking these huge scrapes of the entire internet and they, they've got you down. They know more about you than you'll, you'll know about yourself. Um, you're surrounded by server farms, you're surrounded by a social graph, they compare it to derivative data, they compare it to all kinds of data, and you are here, and that's how big data surrounds you. you. You really just don't stand a chance. Big data is starting to feed back on itself. So now they tell you what to do, you respond, more data is generated, that data now feeds you back again, and, you, and it starts pushing people in, in, in ways that we just don't understand. So what is the, the actual effect of Curiosity? It's to shut out the lights on big data. You own your Curiosity. You can deploy it. It's anonymous until the point of transaction. You can deploy it, you can retract it. If somebody wants to know who you are and what you, what you're, what you can do, they need to buy that data from you. So right now they're buying it from Facebook, they're buying it from, from, from Google. But now we can give them an opportunity to, for people to sell their own data. Now this gives them the motivation to create good data. So now their jobs, their careers are going to be in the domain of creating data in their community. And I mean it's very clinical but it resolves to very much what we're doing now except we own the data like property. So when you own your own property you're going to deploy it differently, you're going to have many more options to work with other people and you're going to be basically set free. So what's happened is we flip from an economy of scarce tangibles to economy of abundant intangibles. So what's, what's now the factors of production are your social, your, your creative and intellectual capital. So the key features is it's a personal API, you own it, it's, it's, it's controlled by the user, it's cryptographic by nature, so now you could use your Curiosity to unlock a, a, a smart contract on a blockchain, you can, you know, the data, your, your jobs could be flowing and you could just add your Curiosity and that would unlock your, 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 the job that you're going to do, you can combine it with, um, with the, the public key and you could, you could now exchange value cryptographically. Um, it's anonymous until the point of transaction. It's sort of like Craigslist. You get to see all the data, but until you want to interact with somebody, that's when you reveal your identity. Nobody needs to know your name, your age, your race, the color of your skin, any of this stuff. These are absolutely irrelevant. You're just putting on your intentions and how you intend to interact with society. It's predictive, so you can, you've got the, the ability to predict the probability that a group of uh, people can execute a business plan or that this community is where you can add most value and this is all done algorithmically. So um, it's a very, very simple, simple thing to do. And the impact that it could have on the world is vast because we are now organizing ourselves differently. So your primary customers are going to be pretty much anybody who's doing business in tangibles, except they're doing business now in intangibles. So they're going to change a lot from inside, but they're not going to be, uh, they're not, you don't have to destroy them, you don't have to get rid of them. 